Lauren was staying at her mates for the weekend and was FaceTiming her then husband to say goodnight when they heard a loud knock from her husband's end of the phone. She and her mate laughed, saying, we take it that's the Chinese you ordered. But they soon stopped laughing when the colour drained from his face and he replied, that came from the cellar. I know. First time we're videoing it. But, and also, saw our friend this morning. This is what everyone says. Everyone says that Red Haunted is their favourite. I know. Do you know how much work, <laughs> comparatively, <laughs> we put in to the actual episodes compared to Red Haunted? Which is just like working through the emails that you guys send us about scary stories. And people but like, we this love is them. Don't stop sending no, them. No, no, don't stop sending them. Please send us more. Especially if you have audio video or photographic evidence yes yeah love that love even if it's fake i don't <laughs> care Do, i mean we have had one fake one which was just a cardboard cutout fake it better fake it yeah try harder but i'm fine with that because it's still scary still scary and full of lols and Absolutely. we're all about the lols definitely so let's bring it oh my god i'm so excited i haven't actually read either of my two i for the first time ever also have not read them just for the just for the experience of reading it for the so first time together. together precisely so my first one okay is from lay it on me a spooky bitch named emily i don't know if that's your real name emily hopefully it is and uh the title again i don't know if you've given it uh this title or seb has uh we should probably just ask him one day what the system <laughs> is um no i like the mystery never. exactly so when emily was 12 sorry i'm she... gonna stop reading it I'm no no reading stop reading it sorry yeah. She moved into a five-year-old farmhouse in Hertfordshire, which is where I'm from. Hello, everyone in Hertfordshire. That turned out to be haunted as bulls. Was it five years old or was it 500 years 500 old? 500 years. Did I say five years yes. old? I Less impressive. Terribly sorry. Five-year-old building, a five-year-old haunted <laughs> farmhouse is not scary at all. 500-year-old okay, farmhouse Okay, okay. I'm Hopshire. with you now. Good. Okay. Get back into the vibe Sorry. of a 500-year-old farmhouse. I'll stop fact-checking you uh, on the No, script. no, please do. Clearly, I need it. <laughs> uh, and it turned out to be as haunted as balls, which is... Um, definitely Seb. Yes, definitely. <laughs> I'm going to say Seb. Check one on that. Uh, it was a long, old house with six bedrooms and long, winding corridors. From the outside, it looked quaint, even cute. But inside, it had a much darker atmosphere. Oh, good, good storytelling. And, and damn, I would imagine. Possibly. 500 years old, don't Possibly. do it. Possibly. I know. I think that's where like maybe the coldness comes from because she also talks about, in general, the house felt very old and heavy. So maybe there's that dampness. That's like in, in the air. Haunting of Hill House where the little girl says the house is loud. Oh, that's, that's I forgot about that yeah. line. That's such a good line, so though. Good. That's such so a good line. <laughs> Love that show. It makes Blind Manor even not more disappointing. Manor, yeah. <laughs> Fucking get the bed, Blind Manor. Manor. I'm still so angry about the show. It's it's so I honestly think about it all the time. I mean, do you remember my entire notes page? <laughs> yeah. What was it called? Issues. <laughs> it was just like an open letter to Netflix. Yeah. I, had into, I titled the notes page like Issues or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was so bad. Even after several bottles of wine, it was still so bad. Yeah. So anyway, back to this 500-year-old farmhouse. So it felt old and heavy with a cold unease that never seemed to lift, regardless of the weather. Mm. That's like my bedroom at home. Mm. So Emily moved into the second largest room in the house, which was accessed from a tiny staircase leading up from the kitchen. Emily called it the Red Room. Uh-oh. Isn't that what the one in oh, Haunting of Hill House was called? Yes. <laughs> looked at camera <laughs> but Bly Manor was the one that was likely in Hertfordshire because they were just like oh perfectly uh, 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 oh, no I can't do it I can't do it anyway so the only convincing accent though in the whole thing <laughs> yeah I know <laughs> so Emily called her bedroom the red room and it's even fucking creepier and it's because of the battered bloody red carpets that lined the floor Emily are you okay red carpets why the fuck 
is that how are your parents? I don't know. Maybe they'll come into it later. Okay. But for now, we don't know anything about Emily because I haven't read this whole story. Red ring covered in blood, no problem. Okay, moving on. So, of all of the rooms in this creepy old house, Emily hated the red room the most. Then why did you move into it, Emily? Maybe she. Maybe she's got like five brothers. Maybe, and they stole all the other rooms, all of the good rooms. So she moves into this one, but it's the one that she hates the most. It was dark, dingy, and had a genuinely dreadful atmosphere. She could never sleep in it properly, and worst of all, it constantly felt like someone was watching her. No, I know, I, hate it. I know, hate it. Um, I've also got a sneeze in my nose, so um, it might show up. Okay, that's fine. We're all prepared now, though, so it's okay. So she grumbled and complained to her parents. Oh, her parents are now making an, uh, making oh, an that's appearance. Oh, them. Okay, they're, they're here. Uh, she complained. I was to about to call the NSPCC. <laughs> <laughs> she complained to them all of all the. Oh, God. Sorry, I'll kick the table. My stomach's rumbling. It's all kicking <laughs> up. Um, she complained to them all the time about the creepy red room. But being a grumpy teenager, this just fell on deaf ears. After a few weeks, the room developed such a sickening atmosphere that Emily would find herself waking in the night in floods of tears and oh, whimpering. Emily's not okay. Sorry. And would have to bury herself under the covers just to feel safe. It doesn't say how old. She, oh, she's a teenager. She's a teenager when this is happening. So somewhere in that adolescent okay. phase okay. of life. And one night, about a year after she'd moved in, Emily had a friend over for a sleepover. They had a nice day together, messing around and doing whatever it is you do when you're... Th oh, she's 13. When you're 13, uh, that seems to take up so much of your time and makes you feel very important. The pair... Um, however, this fun day didn't last long because at around 4 a.m., they were both woken up by an almighty crash. <laughs> they looked around in the darkness, their eyes still adjusting to the light. And at first, they couldn't see what had made the huge bang. But then it became clear. Oh no. And I'm reading this with a lot of tension and looking at you, but I don't know what the answer is. <laughs> then it became all too what a clear. Prayer. <laughs> Everything on Emily's desk had been shoved off onto the floor. A torch had been on the desk, showed all of her pens, pencils, mugs, and trinkets all rolling around on the floor. <gasps> Emily and her friend both screamed. There was no window open or even the slightest breeze that could have caused the chaos. And there was nobody else awake in the house. Oh no. <laughs> They grabbed their duvets and ran into another room, choosing to sleep on the floor there rather than in the horrid red room. Mm. So that's where that bit of the story ends because now we skip forward a month because a month or so after this, Emily's grandparents came over to stay at the house and she happily gave up her much bigger red room for the smaller one next door. Anything to get out of it. Emily, why don't you just move into the smaller one next door? I love the idea that her parents are like, no. You can't sleep in the smaller guest room. You have to sleep in the giant bedroom that you are actively terrified of. It's this weird story. I don't understand what's happening. Anyway, the next day, Emily's granddad, who was a fairly no-nonsense, balls-of-steel kind of guy who had even fought in World War II, announced over breakfast that something evil lived in the house. Mm -mm, no. Granddad. My sneeze is now in my throat. I'm sorry. Can we, Joe? <laughs> It migrated. Oh no. So apologizing, he said he would never be staying there again. That's not what you want to hear. So after that night, Emily's parents took her grumbles a little bit more seriously and she never slept in the red room again. At this point, the family had been living in the house for over a year. Mm -hmm. And this is when, I feel like a year is a long time before anybody brings this particular point up. But at this point, somebody brought up over dinner that from the outside of the house, it looked like there should be a room above the kitchen. Mm. Which, immediately, terrifying. Also, like, unless the farmhouse just has, like, a one-story extension, naturally there would be something sat above that room. It, it feels like something they should have investigated. Yes, but it wasn't <clears throat> investigated until a year into this uh, horrifying journey. So they realise there's a room up there. But when he went upstairs, the family thought it was very curious that no such room existed. It is the red room. Yeah, no, it's just getting very sinister. So the family got out a ladder and Emily's dad managed to pry open the ancient trap door and stick his head through the hole. Oh, I mean, I know there's no other way you can do it. You can't like go feet first. <laughs> yeah, it just seems like a weird thing to put the most important part of your body in immediate danger. No, no. These days, like a, you just made a periscope. Camera on That's a stick. That's what I would have done. Camera on a stick. That's a all you've got. Blue piece of periscope. Um, so yeah, they 
St Emily's dad sticks his head into the trapdoor to check, and Emily, who was holding the ladder, kept asking, what's up there, dad? To which he only replied with silence. I got my stomach shush. <laughs> Quiet, you beast. <laughs> replied with silence as he poked his torch around the cavernous black face. Oh, Emily's dad, man, you're fucking freaking my stomach out. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> even her digestive tract is scared. <laughs> so when he eventually came back down the ladder, he didn't say much. He looked shaken and quietly started packing the ladder away. I thought you were going to say packing everyone's bags <laughs> and leaving. Just quietly <laughs> just folding his golf jumpers. And his stomach was just rumbling the entire time. Socks. <laughs> no words. No words at all. Just packing them all into the car. <laughs> so Emily, who um, describes herself as a belligerent teenager, begged her dad to tell her what was up there, or at least to let her have a look. Emily, man. To which he, of course, answered no. However, after a few hours of pleading, it was eventually Emily's turn to stick her head through the trap door and into the hidden room. So this is how irritating teenagers are, that a possible like supernatural force or something horrible that someone has seen in a room, enough hours of pestering that you'll just be like, yeah, fine, do what you want. I can't be bothered to fucking listen to this anymore. <laughs> and Emily says that when she stuck her head through the trap door, what she saw chilled her bones. No, I'm, I'm scared. I'm scared too, because I don't know what she saw. So, the room was ancient and hadn't been touched for hundreds of years. There were enormous arches that led from the darkest corners of the room up to the centre, and from the very middle hung a rope that had a giant noose at the end, and it circled the entire floor. I don't know what that means. Um, Anyway, so there's a, there's a rope hanging from the, the ceiling, which is not very fun. And uh, the trap door. Oh, fuck. No, wait. The noose hung. It looks like through where you stick your head through the trap door. <gasps> no, I need the emotional support. Okay. <laughs> Needless to say, Emily didn't stay around for very long in the ceremonial hanging chamber to take notes. But the fact that it was directly next to the red room, which is her horrible room that she doesn't like being in, seemed to explain a lot. The room also apparently wasn't on any plans of the house. Oh, no. Which is not cool. Even the earliest made plan made no mention of it. And about a year later, after Emily's parents divorced and they left the farmhouse for good, something Emily... Uh, they eventually left the farmhouse good for good. Something Emily was genuinely grateful for. Which is saying something, I guess, when it was because yeah, your, your parents, parents got divorced. Up, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm upset. I hated that. That's fucking horrible. Ooh. Oh, God. If you've made that one up, Emily, congratulations on your imagination. Oh, and if it's God. true, I'm really sorry. Yeah, I mean, that was a very good one. Thank you for that. Um, thank you for that, Emily. Okay. Do you want the emotional support pick? Um, whenever I see stuffed animals now, I can only think of the Hello Kitty episode. Oh, where I'm like... <laughs> I have my I sit with that pig day in, day out. Everyone in this wee work definitely fancies me and not a real emotional support animal. I need animal. you to sit like this. That's amazing. <laughs> Mate, you know what? We all have to get through life yeah. doing whatever yeah. we need to do yeah. to yeah. get through life <laughs> and this existence that we have. So no yeah. shame. I've scrolled completely past your one, so I don't have really you. accidentally read it because I want to be thrilled. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> and I'm sat on so many cushions, I can't even lean Don't on them. Don't ruin the illusion. The little Cerise's grown arch. a whole foot. I've had a growth spurt <laughs> over lockdown. It's been quite the adventure. That's why I'm so hungry. I'm a growing girl. <laughs> anyway, let's get through this. Okay, okay sorry. Yeah. <laughs> this one is from Amber. Um, and quite, what's the word I'm looking for? Appropriately mm -hmm. for someone named after a precious thing. Hmm. It's called the demon from the mines. Oh. You don't mine amber, though, do you? It grows on trees. I don't know. Doesn't it? Possibly. Yes. Yeah, it's, yes. it's like fossilized yeah, yeah. tree sap. Because that's why it? you get like little bugs to yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Oh, God, I'd love that as a, a gift if anyone's watching. <laughs> they want to see you actually book. would as well. Uh, a little <laughs> science and rocks. I love geology. I actually do. Maybe one day I'll start a geology podcast. I don't know what I talk about on it, but I don't <laughs> your know. dino blog. The end. A dino blog. You know, what? I found an article the other day about, and I actually screenshot it, but then I never sent it to you because I was like, I've got better things. She'll to She'll make fun you. of me. Uh, and it said, no, it said that kids who like dinosaurs are uh, above average intelligence. I don't know what the point of that article being written was, but I did have once a dino blog. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's true. And now I just have dinosaur pajamas. I. 
really hope it's still out there somewhere in the like ether. Do you remember what the I can ask my dad because he's the one who set it up for me. I bet he does know. I will find out. Amazing. Okay, anyway. wait. Right, so it this begins. <laughs> Back in the warm, sepia-toned haze that was the 70s. <laughs> Seb really earning his money here. <laughs> Amber's mum lived in Courtney, a small coastal city in eastern Vancouver Island. I'm imagining the island from the rig. Yes. Yes. Or any. There's another really great horror film as well. I think it's got Sean Bean in it. And he like lives on this creepy island. I think it was shot on the Isle of Man and it's got like a little daughter who comes to visit him and then there's all this trepanning stuff and it's really creepy. Is, it's got Jude Law in it and it was a punch drunk production and it was a TV series, no? No, the one I'm thinking of is like, he lives on this farm with a bunch of sheep and then the daughter goes to visit and then she gets like trepanned by a ghost. Oh. It's really creepy. It's got something like the dark or the darkness. I'll find it because it's okay. genuinely like quite a hidden gem of a horror film actually. Mm, your favourite. Mm. So apparently the city, Courtney, the city, mm -hmm. um, sits, ooh. <laughs> Now I understand. Uh, I'm bad at reading out loud. Um, <clears throat> the city sits in the depression. It's not sad. It's just down a bit. Uh -huh. um, and surrounded on three sides by tall wooded snow-capped mountains. Oh, that's nice. With one side of the city facing out to sea. The area is peppered with all of the one with wonderful views and wild animals. Back in the day, Courtney used to make its money from logging, fishing, and coal. However, in the 1970s, the crushing wheels of capitalism <laughs> meant that these industries were less profitable and everyone was a bit sad. So oh. double depression. Yeah, it's in a dip and in a depression. Yes. Double depression. Double dip. <laughs> double dip. <laughs> double dip the depression. Double dip. Isn't that an economic term? The double, double dip recession. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you heard it here last. Economics and ghosts <laughs> and geology. You're welcome. I will continue to bring nothing to the table. You probably you <laughs> correctly identify that it is an economic term. Fantastic. And I apparently have the least desirable degree to date. So, you know, whatever. <laughs> whatever. So, uh, so no one's fucked about fish or trees anymore. So um, the trees grew really tall and the fish got really fat and some grew extra eyes. And then um, the hills became littered with abandoned mines, which always an excellent episode of Ghost Adventures when they go to abandoned mines. I, I have found I in my abandoned mines. vast ghost adventures. Either you find a ghost experience. or COVID, as we heard about on Under the Duvet. <laughs> I know I've got some flat for it. I, I stand by it. Wait, stand by what? COVID coming from a mine. Oh yeah, yeah. I yeah, I'm still uh, in agreement with you. And John Stewart went on Stephen Colbert last week and also said the same thing. So now I feel totally validated. <laughs> well, I still think you're a Trumpist, so. <laughs> so Amber's mum had always been, in her own words, sensitive. And it says here, not in a snowflake way, in more of a Yoda slash Darren Brown way. It's Darren Brown with an E. Outrageous. <laughs> I know. That's one of my, um, like, guilty pleasures is that I actually really enjoy Spelling names wrong. <laughs> Spelling <laughs> names of authors wrong. Um, no, I actually... Oh, wait. It's, it's, oh, no. I'm thinking of Dan Brown. That's something. No, Darren different. Brown's the magician. Darren Brown's the magician. I haven't got any guilty Once pleasures related came to him. to a show that I was working front of house on, and he had a show up the road at the palace, mm. Um, and he, Andrew Scott was in the show that I was working on and they're like mates. So he'd like come to like write a card for Andrew Scott and he had his like magic suitcase with him and the security guard didn't know who he was and he asked to search his bag. <laughs> Derek Brown was like, no, I legally can't show you what's in there. That's amazing. It's so funny. And the security guard was just like, you're not getting in, mate. Like, fair Can enough. I help you? Fair enough. Very funny. I like the security job, doing his job. Yeah, um, Darren Brown, also one Security of the most obnoxious um, Desert Island Discs I've ever listened to. Anyway, I'm sure he's a great guy. Um, <clears throat> yeah, he's got nothing to do with my guilty pleasure. I was going to say, I actually really like uh, the Dan Brown movies and the Dan Brown books, and I'm not going to feel bad about it. I don't think, I, it's right up your street, actually. <laughs> <laughs> that trash thing everyone hates. <laughs> yeah, I love it. 
That, that's your personal brand. Good stuff that wins loads of award. Not interested. No. Utter yeah, no, garbage. No, I Love know. it. <laughs> My brother was like, have you seen Pulp Fiction? And I was like, I can't remember. But I have watched all of the Dan Brown films. I know, I'm a terrible person. Let's move on. What were you saying about Sorry. abandoned minds? <laughs> I can't even remember. I'm just thinking about Darren Brown. He used to wear a cape at university. <laughs> anyway, uh, so Amber's mum, who's the sensitive one, had endless stories of weird and wonderful things that happened around her that nobody could explain. I bet she did. Being the strong, young-willed, young-willed? Strong-willed young woman she was... Amber took these happenings more as encouragement than anything else. And her favorite thing to use her sensitivity for was leading her mates down the pitch black, very dangerous, folly downy abandoned mines with absolutely no light or navigation. No. She just sort of blundered through these murky tunnels. She's got the sight though. The, the third eye open. The third eye. Mm. A chakra. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that means. I don't know either. Um, so the local kids thought that this was an amazing magic trick and they would often drive all the way up to the one of the abandoned mines, the abandoned mines to party and then go on a deep, dark adventure. There really seems to be nothing to do in Courtney. <laughs> <laughs> if the kids' favourite hangout was down the fucking Was line. danger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds terrible. <laughs> so one evening, Amber's mum and her friends were heading out for another night down the mines. And they parked in a clearing outside one of the older mines in the area. Um, the <laughs> that still had the rotten skeleton of a building. Oh, not a person. A building. <laughs> just, just, okay. Chill out, guys. Calm down, everyone. Calm down. Stop panicking. Um, skeleton of a building covering the pit. So, like, I assume when they, like... Mm. Yeah, that one. You know, like in, in Billy Elliot, when his dad goes down the mines. <laughs> oh, my God. You haven't... Oh, no. <laughs> but every single Darren Brown film. Yeah. 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 I can't believe you. That's actually made me really sad. <laughs> Um, anyway, there's a very emotional scene about um, a mine. Oh, okay. Because he breaks the strike so Billy can go to his audition in London. Oh, that's fine. Exactly. So, um... <laughs> okay, so they go into the skeleton building and then they create a gap in the rotten planks allowing them to go into the mine. Why the fuck? I don't know. I don't know. Well, the 70s must have been... Bad is all I'm yeah. gaining from this. Amber's mum said she can't remember how many people came with her into the mine that night, but it was at least three or four people. Amber's mum, man. They don't even know if they left one of the mines. Yeah, yeah. they weren't still know. there. <laughs> Bloody system people. <laughs> Fucking up. You're going to go down the mines. Can we just have a system? So we've got Amber's mum, three or four or ten drunk teenagers uh, in the dark, dangerous, falling down mine. Mm hmm. And once they were below ground, Amber's magic mum led them through a maze of tunnels um, with just pits off in every direction. So one wrong turn and you're dead. Like, there's no, no way around that. Um, and they can't see. Amber's mum, looking back, now thinks it's a wonder that nobody fell. Yeah, I should bloody think so, Amber's mum. You should be ashamed of yourself. Outrageous. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, the nearest town was a tiny miners' camp that was barely big enough for a post office, so the nearest rescue would have been coming from at least three hours away. But after all, that's why Amber's mum led the way, because she's the one with the third eye. Yeah. She can just feel where they're going and presumably can predict where these giant holes are. Yeah. So she leads these three slash four slash 25 people, we don't know, further and further into the mine, slowly making progress in the claustrophobic tunnels. And as they got deeper, she became aware of a strange noise right at the edge of her hearing. Like when you're not sure if you can hear a phone ringing or not. Like I had to line bike this morning because of a lost key situation. Um, have you been on a line bike? No. So they make a noise if they're unhappy. <laughs> if like there's something wrong with them uh -huh. or like you're not really supposed to be riding it or it's running out of battery. Sure. 
um, it makes this like beeping sound, but I'd lost my keys and needed to get to the bike and I was late and needed to get here. So I was just riding this broken line bike <laughs> oh no, across London. Um, and then very heavy when the electric doesn't work. And it was making this doo doo noise the whole way. And I can still hear it. Oh God. Yeah. That's like that doo doo <laughs> is the sound of a battery dying. Yes. Ex <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it was all the way, all the way from Stoke Newington to oh, no. uh, Finsbury Park this morning. That's not And I'm still stressed. Mm. But that's not what Amber's mum was hearing in the 70s down the mine. She's not hearing an electric bike that is broken. <laughs> She's hearing a metallic ring yeah. that she said she could feel more than she could hear. And as they got deeper, this ringing got more intense, like a tuning fork was being played against her teeth. Oh. I've done that. It's extremely unpleasant. Oh. Yep. Oh, um, no, don't do that. Yeah, no, really, really awful. Did I tell you about, sorry, I'm just thinking about teeth. Um, I went and got filling the other day and um, the anesthetic paralyzed my eye so I couldn't close it. <laughs> no, you didn't tell me that. Just one or both? It's one. This is one. Yeah, yeah, I've got pictures. It's really funny. Oh my God. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, it was... I was a bit scared that my face was just broken. I just, I just couldn't close Imagine it at all. Imagine like, never be able to close it again. It's I like know. Those dolls with the sleepy eyes, like when you lay them down and pick them up, but you would just like lie down. No, I know. I, I had to tape it shut. I taped it shut so I could go to sleep. No. And then like just cross my fingers that I would wake up in the morning. Fine. And I did. And it's fine. See? Working. Working eyes. Ocular situation. Jesus. Yeah, it was really scary. Um, anyway, so... Um, Apparently, so her, her teeth are buzzing and the pressure around her felt like the rocks themselves were pushing her away. Suddenly, the tour group found themselves <laughs> at the end of a tunnel and just like that, the ringing stopped. They had conquered the mountain and they ambled their way back to the surface with confidence, um, which they definitely shouldn't have had. No. And soon as, as, as soon as they were out again in the outside, not danger town, they found their way to a nice bit of forest. I don't know what that word is. <laughs> bit of forest. And they had a lay down um, and they started to shout into the night. And that is when they heard it. A deep energetic noise building from deep within the forest. It sounded like the bellowing wind you might find on the cliffs by the sea. So it could have just been the wind. Wind. <laughs> sounded like the wind. Through, it was just the wind blowing through the tunnels that we know are there. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, Amber, I'm sure it's true. Um, <clears throat> at first, Amber's mum thought it might be echoes bouncing off the mountains, um, but as the noise grew louder and louder, she knew that that couldn't be true. They all looked at each other and got a primal sort of fight or flight oh, feeling that you only get when you're really, really scared. Did you know there are five reactions? No. So there's fight, flight, or maybe there's four, fawn, which is like when like traumatized, <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Like traumatized children will be like, oh, I'll do literally anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, and that is a, um, it's a reflex. It's a, mm. and there's another one that I can't remember. Freeze. Uh, so there are four. Yeah, give up. Like, mm. just like, yeah, just like, cool. yeah. <laughs> So there you go. Someone's going to therapy, it's me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Which one are you? Oh, fawn, easily. You have to, oh, whatever you want, please. Yeah. Oh, would you like to hit me with your car? Please, thank you so much. Where's that grenade? I'll just jump on it. Yeah, that's exactly what I do. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so they are fight or flight. And the trees in front of them started to crack and snap. So it definitely seems like it's wind, but apparently there was no wind. I don't believe you, Amber Sam. Um, and the trees began to sway like something was pushing them aside. Whatever giant thing was causing all the noise started to place left and right in front of them. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Moving, I suppose. Mm. Um, and then the trees uh, moved wherever this sort of force is. Okay. And the force just remains just out of their sight line, which seems convenient. <laughs> um, and Amber's mum is fully prepared, prepared for a tornado or um, some sort of enormous raging house-sized bull <laughs> to come charging through. But whatever it was, just kept moving around. And then suddenly, they all ran away. No one can remember who ran first. 
Uh, before they knew it, everyone was racing back to their cars. In the mayhem, one boy tripped and fell, and although Amber's mum didn't specifically remember using his face as a springboard, <laughs> there was a large foot-shaped bruise on his oh face. Oh, my God. Amber's mum. That's the worst thing is when you're, you're okay, teenagers huh? and you go to scary places and then there's that one thing that just, like makes everybody run and mm. then it's just that immediate fear of everybody running away <laughs> and like me just never being the fastest person in that but you just don't want to be the slowest oh no, no you don't have to be the fastest you just have to be not the slowest not the slowest yeah yeah <laughs> so what i tell myself in the gym exactly <laughs> just don't be the worst it's a good way to live life you don't yeah. have to be the fastest just don't be the slowest <laughs> They never saw uh, what caused the noise. Do you know what? Maybe, um, you know, like in the Dalatov Pass stuff, and they yes. talk about mini tornadoes. Mm. Mini tornado? But quite possibly. Or bullshit. <laughs> or that. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm sure it's true. Um, but there was no hurricane warning, no weather warnings of any sort. So they just thought it must have been something mm. else entirely. Yeah, weather sounds. And they just drove back into town. Um, but whatever it was, followed them. What? And Amber's mum, apart from one other time where she fucked about a bit too much, has learned from this experience just not to push it. Just another just top don't. tip for life. Just, yeah, yeah, don't be the slowest and just don't push it. Just don't push it. It almost sounds like, have you heard of that phenomenon where it's, it's the hum? That people, some places can just hear this infrasound, this sound that they like. A lot of people are like, "Oh, it's bullshit. It's not true." But I feel like it could be true, and it's just like people hearing this, like, mm, yeah, like constantly. I read the infrasound is um, it's a frequency of sound that we can't actually hear, mm. but it's the same frequency mm. that our eyeballs oscillate at. Mm. So when you are in spaces that have infrasound, and no one knows why yeah. it happens but people are more likely to feel like someone is watching them or see something like shooting past their vision because your brain doesn't know what to do with it so that so some people think there's a documentary about it actually bethnal green station is one of the places where it is oh. and there was a um in the war there was a huge um it was bombed in in the blitz and loads of women and children died and loads of people think that they can hear the children crying but it's just loads of infrasound that's fascinating. I'll find the documentary. There's a documentary specifically about the London Underground being haunted that's loads of infrasound stuff. Maybe we could go to like Bethnal Green Station and. It's a bad station. Do a vlog. It's a terrible. We definitely can, but it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and it's also like you would have to be there like really late so there's not a lot of other people killing the vibe. If anyone then... knows someone who works at TFL, yeah. And I mean, get some access. Danny's so... dad. Mr. Fajobi! Dammy's the person who introduced us. Uh, his dad works Duh. at TFL. He does work. quite a dammy heavy day today. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, next one is from Lauren. And this one is called Haunted Husband? Question mark. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scroll past yeah, it. Yeah, scroll past it. So, <laughs> Laura's ego got prego. Mm -hmm. That is the starting of our Haunted Husband story. And <laughs> with, her wonder uh, with her wonderful daughter when she was 18 years old. So she and her ex husband got married quite quickly. Don't know what time frame this is, but they, you know, he decides to make an honest woman out of uh, Lauren's mum. Uh, oh no, wait, is it Laura? Laura or Lauren? I don't know. Um, we're going to go with both. Doesn't matter. Sorry, apologies. Uh, I think it's Laura. It says Laura in the script and uh, Lauren in the title. So Laura. Laura's ego got preco. She has a daughter, 18 years old. They get married. And... Um, when they got, uh, when they got married, they moved into an old four-floor house in Telford. So we're still in the UK, Telford. Okay. That's like in the Midlands somewhere. I think it's near Birmingham. Pass. Oh, that's Tamworth. That's Tamworth, <laughs> definitely. I have no idea Telford. where Telford is. I don't know. Um, so anyway, they're in Telford. And uh, the house was properly old-fashioned. Fireplace in every room and a wet cellar kind of old-fashioned. What's a wet cellar? You keep that meat? I don't think it's, I think it was just a bit damp. I don't know if it's oh, like right. a specific desirable thing where you have like a dry cellar and a wet cellar. I see, okay, I got it. Like you have like a wet room. Got it, got it. I don't, but I could be wrong. It's we, happened before. It could be wrong, who knows. Um, so the house itself was a little eerie, but the location was great and they needed somewhere ASAP. In brackets, Rocky. <laughs> so soon Laura's daughter was born and uh, they were consumed by much more important things than eerie vibes. Yeah, I can imagine if you're like, just had a newborn baby and there's like a ghost like, ooh, like shut the fuck. <laughs> Least of your problems, fuck. I think. I have a colicky baby yeah, in the other God. room. I don't give a fuck, mm -hmm. go away. 
So that was until dot 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 their first child-free night in the house came a few months after their daughter was born. And eight or so of their friends came over for a quiet drink. You don't have eight people over for a no, quiet drink. No, that's a rager. No, that is. And uh, things quickly escalated into drunken silliness. Oh, Kelsey Pree's Laura. Slash rager. Uh, so <laughs> sooner or later, they started playing hide and seek. This sounds like an orgy. It sounds like a swingers party. You don't have eight or so people over, get drunk, and then play hide and no. seek mm, in your house. No. <laughs> There's parents are like the kids with the grandparents, our first child free night, a few months after their daughter was born. So they're like keen to get back on it. Hide orgy. And seek. Orgy. There is a lot of fucking keys in a bowl at this thing. Anyway. <laughs> so. We went away for Saruti's no, yeah. <laughs> But Pre COVID, so yeah. like. It was allowed to, you could have yep. fun with other people. Um, we didn't have an orgy though. That's what it sounds no, like it's leading no, to. <laughs> no, 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 no orgies. But uh, the house that we rented in wherever it was, Kent, had, it was very clearly like marketed towards swingers. Like in the um, bathroom, there were loads of like masks and like robes and like lube and close ups of um, paintings. Close up paintings of um, asses. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, like, very genital themed mm -hmm. bathrooms. Yes. Um, so, and I left my electric toothbrush there, so RIP. You know that's inside. I know exactly where it is, yeah. Anyway. It's inside another person. Exactly. So, this is going down, possibly or possibly not, at Laura's house. I strongly suspect that Laura's mum is having an orgy. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, so playing hide and seek. These adults are playing hide and seek. And a few rounds in, and now at peak hiding ability, everyone was huddled away uh, and in a few various items of furniture. I don't know what that means. I guess they're hiding around furniture. When the giggly silence was broken by an enormous bang from downstairs. I fucking bet it was. And it was so loud, it shook the floors. Fearing that someone had drunkenly stacked it, the, the adults abandoned their game of hide and seek and headed down to see what the fuck was going abandoned on. Abandoned their game of whiskey and fisting, <laughs> it sounds like. And when they went downstairs, they found the front and the back doors wide open. Oh no. There's some sort of sexual innuendo in there as well. Anyway. She made a bomb joke. We have a game. Because Saru hates like poo and bomb jokes. So if anyone can entice her into making a bomb joke, which yeah. she just did a hundred points. But I actually think um, you're going to have to award them to yourself. I will. Award because them I didn't to even try. I mean, it just came so naturally. <laughs> so anyway, uh, all of the lights started flickering at this point, which is obviously creeping me, everyone who was clearly very drunk at this party also creeping them the fuck out. And... Um, the post-bang silence sounds like something from Urban Dictionary. That's so true. Bang post-bang silence. That's the worst. Are you going to bang them? Like, oh, that oh, is no. so funny. That's horrible. That's, That's horrible. So, being half cut, as we know these adults are. Yeah, whiskey and fisking. Absolutely. Uh, they made a mediocre attempt to try and find the intruder. Before quickly giving up, moving on, cracking out some more bevs, and cracking on some Sean Paul. Can't argue with that. No, can't argue with that. There's no evidence that they did actually play Sean de Paul. But <laughs> Sean de Gossip. <laughs> we're gonna say that they did. Uh, I don't know if that's actually very good orgy music though. What's good orgy music? Um I don't know. I don't know. I, th I always imagine orgies when I think about orgies, I think about Oh, I just had a really horrible intrusive thought. Um, <laughs> when I think about orgies, I think about eyes wide shut. Yeah, I was so say. it's always like classical mm -hmm. rich person music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. That is like sinister. And we watched that movie Perfection. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. That's what it is. So anyway, a couple of weeks later, Lauren and her ex-husband were in bed at around 2 a.m. She wasn't the deepest sleeper at the best of times, let alone in this creepy old house that they just bought. And because Lauren isn't the biggest fan of the dark, and not a psychopath, it says in brackets, she likes to sleep with the landing light on and the door cracked open. People who sleep with the door open are psychopaths. I know. I'm sorry, that is wrong. No. I, door shut. Incorrect. All lights off. I mask on. Do you know what my bloody said, my sister said to me? So I still haven't got a full length mirror for my room. Mm -hmm. um, and 
the like wall, the like side of my wardrobe faces my bed. She was like, why don't you just put it on there? I was like, because then the mirror demons will watch me sleep, idiot. Like, of course I can't put it there. That's how Of course that's the worst place for it Maybe to go. Maybe your sister is a psychopath. That sounds like a terrifying idea. I just, why would you choose to, to mirror watch yourself sleep? Never, Terrible. Never, ever, Awful. ever. Absolutely not. So they're in bed, doors open, lights on. That particular night, her worst fears were realized when she turned over to see a black or blank, it says blank, I think it probably means black, black shadow hovering over her, her then husband, uh, over her then husband staring down Got at it. him. Okay, so the shadow is staring down at the husband okay. and it's scaring Laura. Needless to say, she lost her shit at this point and screamed her tits off, shouting, turn the light on, turn the light on, until both her ex-husband and her baby had woken up. Quite rightly, after this particularly rude awakening and Lauren's creepy explanation, her ex-husband was a little shaken. But they both decided that it was just a bad dream and eventually they went back to sleep. Is this why he's the ex? I don't know. If somebody woke me up periodically screaming that there was a shadow hanging over me, that relationship. Someone wakes you up full stop. I've been on the wrong end of that sometimes. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Bad news. Bad news. <laughs> <laughs> so after this, uh, somehow, they got back on track and life carried on as normal for a few months until Lauren's nan came to visit their new house. Now, Lauren's nan is a self-proclaimed witch. Love it. Love it. Oh, I can tell you if you're, if you're a witch. Give me a hand. So in between people who are witches like me. <laughs> so in between your, I can't remember which one's which, but in between these two big lines, if you're a witch, you have a cross, which I have. In between these two? Yeah. Bang. Witch. Oh my God. Burn look her. at that. Yours is actually better than mine. That's really annoying. Oh, burn her. <laughs> Fucking witch. Burn witch. So, uh, witch, witch general Hannah has uh, given you the, the identifying toolkit to find out if you indeed are a witch. Lauren's nan is. And the first thing she said upon entering this home was, quote, there's a bad man here. Don't invite him up. A lot of like mm. grandparent soothsayers this time. Just very inappropriate, I think. Um, I get annoyed if someone walks into my house and they don't compliment my lamp three times. <laughs> Let alone <laughs> this energy is horrible. Yeah. Something definitely yeah. undead. Don't say hosts that. here. Probably just leave it. <laughs> and although she never explicitly told Lauren to move out. Which I think, if My there is something, I oh no, gosh, I can hear it. It's like a <laughs> mini tornado. <laughs> um, she also never came to the house again. However, Lauren and her husband and the baby move out. They did not um, move out. Oh, move out. They did not. Sorry, oh, move out. They oh. did not. Okay. And a few years later, they had another strange experience. I thought you were going to say another baby. Another Slow baby. Down. <laughs> that was a strange experience. We had another baby. <laughs> Lauren was staying at her mates for the weekend and was FaceTiming her then husband to say goodnight when they heard a loud knock from her husband's end of the phone. She and her mate laughed, saying, we take it that's the Chinese you ordered. But they soon stopped laughing when the colour drained from his face and he replied, that came from the cellar. And also, I'm racist, so no kung fu for me. And uh, that's the woman I'm having an affair with. <laughs> <laughs> I locked her in the cellar. <laughs> So they stayed on the phone as he barricaded the cellar closed with a sofa and then stayed with him until they all fell asleep. Lauren then came home the next morning and they both checked the cellar together. There wasn't anyone or anything in sight, however. But Lauren was so freaked out by this that she contacted a medium who came over to the house shortly afterwards. Loaded agenda though. The medium's not going to come over and be like, there's nothing here. Yeah, everything's fine. They're going to be like, there's fucking scary shit in the basement. <laughs> Give me loads of money. So anyway, one sec. I need a little, little sip of water. <laughs> I don't just... know why I found that so funny. You're like a stressed politician. <laughs> <laughs> so, the yes, medium... Please go through my tax records. <laughs> So the medium, unsurprisingly, okay. told Lauren that there were two male spirits in the house. Okay. One was a kind old miner who felt that he was the man of the house and liked watching her, watching Lauren and her daughter play. Okay. All right. Liked watching the orgies as well, I bet. <laughs> um, maybe that was the second spirit because the second spirit was a darker one who oh. lived in the cellar 
and wanted to be left alone. That doesn't sound that dark. He doesn't want to bother you. He just wants to be left alone. Yeah, but he's the one banging around. That's true. Um, (laughs) Well, he could well say the same about Lauren. (laughs) So anyway. (laughs) You're just just like, victory Uh, soon. Victory, I'm so dehydrated. (laughs) So the medium told Lauren, very explicitly, like her witchy nan had done, don't invite him up. Okay. According to the medium, neither of the ghosts liked it when Lauren, when her ex-husband shouted at her, and they seem to have become very protective of Lauren. Four years later, Lauren and her husband ended up getting divorced, and this is when the ex-husband left the house, and the spooky vibes seemed to leave with him. Suspicious. Another divorce. Mm, I know. Well, one and two. (laughs) Totally pointless. I love the idea of like major reasons for divorce, financial problems, and ghosts (laughs) haunting your house and (laughs) fisting. (laughs) Fisting. Classic. (laughs) So, uh, the spooky vibes leave with him. This is where we got to. I've lost my place because I made a mistake and scrolled down when I shouldn't have done. Oh yeah, okay. And not long after this, her brother moved in and there were still no complaints from the ghosts. Three years later though, Lauren met her now partner and after six months of taking things slowly, they decided that it was time for him to stay over. After how many months? Six months. Fuck me. She has got a kid though. A daughter as well. Still. Okay. It's a long time. It's a long time. But maybe they were just doing it in the car before that. Uh, maybe. <laughs> Apparently women who have daughters um, don't remarry as quickly because they're scared their daughters are going to get sexually assaulted by their new partner. Oh. Statistically. There you go. Because statistically that is also. Men. What happens. So anyway, from the first time he stayed over, he complained of loud bangs when he was alone and the sound of people walking up and down the stairs. Lauren just blamed this on her brother being noisy when she full well knows <laughs> that there are two fucking ghosts in the cellar who don't like the men she's banging. And um, this came to a head, though, when one night Lauren woke up to see her partner sweating buckets and white as a sheet. He wouldn't talk about what had happened until he was out of the house the next day. And this is when he said he'd seen a shadowy black figure in the doorway of the bedroom that filled him with the deepest fear he'd ever felt in his entire life. And then he refused to ever come back to the house again, and shortly afterwards they moved into a new place about 30 miles away and never heard a ghostly peep ever again. So he'd wait, I, I've waited six months to shack you. And <laughs> your house is fucking Yeah, haunted. nope. <laughs> well, there you go. That must have been quite the scare. I mean, that was quite scary. I'll take that. Okay, right. My final mm-hmm. Red Haunted... Ever. No, I'm joking. Um, do you remember when Scylla Black just went on Blind Day and she was like, I'm not going to do this show anymore and didn't tell anybody because they wouldn't let her out of her contract. So she just went on live TV. I love and that. And she was like, I'm Scylla Black. This is Blind Day. Fuck you all. I'm not coming back. Oh, I love that. I know. Love I love Scylla that. Black. I love Scylla Sorry. Black. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, I talk with my hands too much. I'm not used to like Lebel. not being able to do whatever the fuck I want. I'm a dream to work with, I promise. Okay, so mine is called A Foul Mouth Spider and a Crying Baby. Oh, okay. And it says Rob, but it's not actually from Rob. Okay. It's from Rob's partner, and we don't actually know their name I like or the gender. Idea. I like the idea that this person is just throwing Rob under the bus, but not naming themselves. I'm here for it. Okay. Okay. So Let's Rob first, so I don't know. He's our central character. Um So our mystery caller and Rob live in a unique house built at the turn of the last century. So what's that, like 1900s? Yeah. Or the millennium. (laughs) Just five years old. (laughs) 20 year old house. Okay, great. Um, So this mystery person lived there as a child with her parents. Okay, it's a lady. Um, And has since moved back as it's been passed on to her, so she's inherited her childhood home, which is quite cynical and nice. Um, Neither she nor Rob believed in ghosts until they lived in this house. But what they have seen since living there has left them in absolutely no doubt at all. The vibe when she moved back in was totally different than it had been when she was a kid. 
it was much spookier. They'd often hear a tap at the window or hear someone walking behind them, only to find nobody there. Mm. I love that the house got haunted in the space of time after she had grown up in there and then come back as an adult. Right, like she's the thing that fucked it up. Oh, like it was all fine until she lived there and then she left and now it's haunted. Oh no. I'm sure you're fine, mystery lady. Um, not just like haunted. followed by demons. So they even began to see an odd shadow moving past in their peripheral vision, like when you hear infrasound. And this all ramped up even more in March 2020, bloody hell, when Mystery Lady's ego is prego. Um, has, has there been a baby in every story, apart from Amber's mum? Um, I feel like we should start doing a, um, a uh, parenting like podcast. Maternity, <laughs> maternity line that says my ego is prego. <laughs> and another one that says Bing Bang Baby. That never Bing, Bing Bang Baby we can have. Ego is prego is from Juno, stolen it. Oh yeah, I forgot that. Uh, yeah. I see. Bing Bang Baby though. Bing Bang Baby is 100% you. <laughs> <laughs> to steal my jokes. I've like said it to Casey at Catalyst, who's the one that does our merch, and she just ignored it. <laughs> Did she? Because I sent her a list of all the merch that we want to do, and then she responded to everything. I just ignored the basic Bing Bang Baby. <laughs> She, Casey has said no. People. Justice for Bing Bang Baby, I, I think. Know. I'll bring it back up. Okay. <laughs> Next time. When do people usually have babies? I feel like October and March are the I big... I think I actually did look up baby when, when most people are like... Um, well, whenever it's nine months away from yeah. Christmas Day, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Nine months away from New Year, nine months away from Valentine's Day. Mm. Those are your hotspots, I think. But it's also got to be like in the spot between when a woman is like five months pregnant and nine months pregnant because that's when they'll wear maternity clothes. Yeah, because after they've had the baby, they'll be like, don't need it anymore. No, I'm fine. So uh, it's all right. Me so weirdly no, wearing just... a big bang baby jumper. If I'm not pregnant, that's the problem. <laughs> 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 okay, so <laughs> let's get to back to Rob and mystery lady and the mystery baby. <laughs> For instance, um, one night when Rob had already gone to bed. Mystery lady came down with a case of the pregnancy peas. So she went to the toilet only to find the door closed and the light on and Rob inside the bathroom. So she went back to their bedroom to wait for him to finish only to find that he was in bed asleep. No! <laughs> no! No! Such a good noise. No. Another night, Rob got up for a midnight wee and he saw a spider on the wall. Okay. Mystery lady. <laughs> if this is true, cynicism coming. Okay, so Rob approached the spider as if to grab it and then put it outside. He's not even going to kill it. And then he hears a quiet voice say, fuck off. <laughs> all right, all right. Okay, okay. The, the foul mouth spider. I get it. <laughs> I don't think I can finish this. <laughs> okay. This is the scariest thing that happened. That spy, he thinks the spider told him to fuck off. How high are these people? I feel like everyone on this has had children and then is just like high or slash drunk the entire time. Good. 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 There's more. Uh, another night, Rob woke up with the feeling of someone sitting down at the end of the bed. Despite the fact our mystery lady was already in bed asleep and there's no one else there in the house, so they think. But then he hears the same quiet voice say, vote for red-handed. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. Say, I don't care. However, all of this pales in comparison to okay. what comes next. Okay. Being parents to a newborn, um, they liked to make those obnoxious film montages of their child that nobody wants, nobody wants to watch those. They just don't. I'm sorry. Stop doing it. It's that paedophiles. Also, I think it's weird. <laughs> the paedophiles, you can do it as much as you want. That's right. <laughs> Send it straight to the pedo prison. <laughs> I 
think it's weird when, like, you know, when people have babies and then they start an Instagram for the baby. Yeah. Does the baby then take over that Instagram account? Ooh, yeah. At what point? And then it we... has their whole documented life already. That's so inappropriate. I hate it. I hate it. Hate I actually it. hate it. It's so inappropriate. You're posting pictures of your baby without the baby's consent, for a start. Yeah. And like, yeah. just, just, just one day. For babies. You're gonna, your child's gonna be like, maybe I didn't want all my embarrassing baby pictures up on an Instagram. Yeah, maybe I didn't want my actual ass on the internet, mum. Yeah, and then once it's on the internet, you can't take it down. A pedo's already downloaded it. It's on the dark fucking web now, being traded for. It's on the dino blog, it's too late. (laughs) So don't fucking post pictures of your kids, especially not. I don't care. I I genuinely don't care. Um, So, everyone who does, you already have their number, so just send it to them. That's my. If they ask, mm. they say, you know what, I would really like today. Picture of your baby. Picture of the child that's not mine and I don't care about. Um, sorry, I'm sure everyone loves your children. I'm going to stop. Okay, so. Um, this can be part of the parenting uh The parenting podcast, podcast. yeah. It's going to be the first episode of It's the just going to be podcast. called Don't. Yes. That's what the show's going to be called. Or can you not? Can you not? Can you just? Can you just not? Okay. Rocket kids. Yeah, okay, so Rob was going through, I'm sure, hours of footage um, to put together another video when he stumbled across one of their baby losing her shit crying while her mum made some milk in the other room. And he said, <laughs> he was too cute not to film. What? Um, so he got his phone out and documented his child being unhappy. <laughs> um, but... When you watch it back, allegedly, you can hear a ghostly mocking voice child. playing peekaboo with the child. Okay, that I would like to see. Video, well, lucky you, because we have it. Um, the video is on YouTube and it has a whole Reddit thread dedicated Ooh. to it um, that Robert started to try and solve the mystery. Most of the comments agree that the voice appears to be repeating the same thing. And most people can make out the word okay, but the rest is uh, up for debate. Why are you saying okay in a peekaboo game? <laughs> Maybe it's <laughs> okay. I don't know. I don't know. I play peekaboo with my dog. I don't so know. I, I want to listen to it. Are we going to listen to it? Yeah. There's a link at the bottom. Okay. She said it at the football last night, so he doesn't sound like himself, and it's making me feel really un- okay. like, uncomfortable. Wait, wait, wait. Should we hit play at the same time? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, stop. 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 Are you going to play it? You're going to do it? No, no. Oh, no. Any one of you can play it. Oh, in that case, Hannah, you play it. Okay. I'll start. Okay. Do you want to watch it as well? Oh, my God. What? It's an okay baby, Rob. I'll give you that. Oh, look at a jumper, though. It's That's a, a cute yeah. jumper. Okay. So I cute. take back everything I said. Cable net. Great. Rob. What? No, play it again. Come on, okay. what the fuck? Replay, replay. Are you fucking having a laugh? <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? Is someone going, one more time, one more time. <laughs> No. Come no. On. What? No. The action. No, come on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, Rob? Come on. No. The come baby's on. crying because it stands a liar. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Rob, it's you. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of closing it, because we both touched it, we just zoomed in on this baby. <laughs> Different baby. Not even oh the same god, baby. Oh, oh my god, that's actually just so. Oh my god. Oh that's god. Um, also, I really enjoyed that that video had like 5,000 likes and then 1,000 dislikes. <laughs> I'm sorry, Rob, that's just so not. What? I wanted it to be like creepy, like a little peekaboo. Uh, 
peekaboo. Okay. Also, when did it sound like he was saying okay? It sounded that, like Gollum. Know. It don't sounded like. Rah, 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 rah. <laughs> it's like was Lord of the Rings just on in the background? Like I kind of want to watch it again. That was really, really strange in the least scary way. <laughs> Oh no, God, no. Sorry. Come on. Rob, I'm sure you're great. But that's not it. Anyway, I think we've come to the end of this edition. This mammoth Red Haunted. Red, our first ever recorded. Video. Pumped. Yeah. Pumped about this. This is so much fun. And um, yeah, I don't know. If there are still tickets available, I don't know if there are by this point that you're watching this, be sure to go get yourself some live tour tickets. The link will be somewhere for you yep. to find. And you know what definitely won't run out? Mm. The book. Yes. You can buy that as long as you like. Or opportunities to vote for us in the British Podcast Awards listeners. Oh, choice. yeah. Also so that one. do that too. And uh, we'll see you like probably in an hour doing something else. <laughs> something else. And like do the YouTube stuff that you're supposed to do. Like, yes. Put on the bell. Subscribe. I hate Smash the about subscribe that. button. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Bye. Did you not like the baby? That and was really. Said, I told you it was shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>